Hi, welcome to my sewing studio. Today we are talking about that classic little girl's dress, the smocked bishop. And I have a tutorial for you on how to pleat it seamlessly. But first, let me introduce myself. I am Lisa, the owner and designer behind Pink Hollybush Patterns. Um, Pink Hollybush Patterns are a line of patterns for children most of which include a um, option to smock the design and most of which are designed for knits, although we have three that are designed for wovens. But I also sew for myself and for my two adult daughters. So here on my channel, I cover all things sewing and smocking. But today we are talking about smocking and the um, bishop dress and I'm going to provide you with a tutorial of how to pleat it seamlessly. So what does that mean and why would you want to do that? Well, traditionally, um, the bishop dress, you sew the four raglan seams and then you put the dress through the pleater and you hope and pray to the smocking gods that you will not catch one of those seams in the um, the pleating threads that you will not break any needles. The goal is for the seams to go through the pleater and not get caught by the pleating threads. Often what happens is you'll get three of those pleats, you'll get three of the seams that'll go through beautifully and you'll get to the last one and you'll have that lump or bump. And now you're like, do I pull it all out and start over? Do I just live with it? In this method, it takes a little bit longer, but the advantage is no seams show. When would you especially want to use this method? Well, if you're trying to pleat anything that's a little bit thicker, such as a fine wheel corduroy, a flannel, um, even a lot of quilting cottons, you just cannot do a regular seam and have that go where you certainly can't do a French seam on some of those and have that go through the pleater. Um, where Batiste might be fine, some of those thicker fabrics are not. So what are the disadvantages to this method? Well, there's two. The first one is you cannot use French seams with this. We're going to put the pieces through um, the pleater before or they're actually sewn together and so the pleating threads will be in the way to do a French seam. And the second disadvantage is you have to thread the pleater several times and it just takes a little bit longer because of that. But the positive side of it is that you will end up with a beautiful perfect result every time. So with that let's go to my cutting table and let me show you how we do that, how we pleat this bishop. So the first thing to know about this method of pleating a bishop is that you need to pleat from the opening to the opening. So I'm going to have a bishop that opens down the center back. So I'm going to start at the center back edge. I'm going to pleat one part of the back then I'm going to pleat my sleeve and I'm going to make sure that I start with the um, section of the sleeve that joins the back and pleat across that. Then I will do my front. I'll do the sleeve, making sure I'm putting through the front, the edge of the sleeve that joins to the front. Then I'll do my other back. You can do this method with a front opening, but then you would start at center front and work your way around. You can also do it with a shoulder opening. You'd start at that shoulder and work around. It's important that all the fabrics go through right side up. Make sure to set up your pleater with your needles all the way over to the left. Now, normally I like my needles more over here because I use the pleater to help control the fabric, but this it doesn't work with this method um, when you pleat the sleeve of the bishop and you're gonna see that in a minute. So start with them over here. You'll see um, in the video that I forgot and started with them over here when I did the back and I had to stop and then shift the needles before I could do the sleeve. So I'm gonna put that back through 
just like I normally would. Now when I get that back through, I'm going to take it completely off the needles. And I'm now going to remove the pleating threads from my seam allowance. And you'll notice I'm removing them to the front. Now you leave whatever seam allowance your pattern calls for. My pattern calls for 3 8 right, You don't want to short yourself in the seam allowance, so if you need to take out an extra pleat, go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm now going to pleat that sleeve piece. And you'll see this is why I need my needles over here so I can line it up. Now, notice my needles are not threaded and that is on purpose. So I'm starting that back piece and I've made sure that I, I've started the sleeve piece and I've made sure that I have um, the part of the sleeve that joins to the back going through first. And I'm just going to start pleating. Now at this point, I want to pull my seam allowance off of the needles. And then push it to the back, right? Like that. So I've got that 3 8 of a seam allowance off the needles. <clears throat> and now I'm going to re-thread them. And I'm going to re-thread right from the back piece. And as I re-thread it, it's very important that I keep thread number one from the back as thread number one. I keep thread number two as thread number two. You get the idea. And that I don't let the threads cross. That's the other piece, uh, um, other trick. So um, thread number two need, like, in other words, if thread number two crossed thread number three, but I still put it in the number two spot, um, I would have a mess afterwards and have to redo it. It wouldn't let me pull up the pleats. So um, make sure that you don't let them cross. It helps if you, if you alternate the colors as I did here. I've used blue and orange. So I know that I've got to have them alternating. Now I'm re-threaded my needles and I'm simply going to pleat this like I normally would. So just as before, I've pulled it off of the pleater and I'm going to remove the pleating threads from my seam allowance. And I'm going to do that now with each piece. I'm going to start it on the pleater without the pleater threaded. I'll pull the seam allowance off and then re-thread it, pleat the piece, take it off, and take the threads out of the seam allowance. I've pleated the front. Again, we're pulling this, pulling it off the pleater, and I'll remove the seam allowance. And here's my finished pleated bishop. 
and you can see from the back, you see how it's pushing those um, seam allowances right to the back. So now I'm going to finish those. So I have finished seamlessly pleating my bishop. I've left long pleating threads, so lots of thread here. So I have room to be able to slide this back and forth and manip manipulate it. So now I need to go ahead and sew my seam allowances. Now the one negative of this method is if you're in love with French seams, you cannot use French seams with this because the pleating threads are going through. You have to use either a regular seam or a mock French seam, or you could serge it. So I've pinned my seam allowances, and I'm just going to do a regular seam. I like to sew it first, and then I'm going to go ahead and serge the edges together. Now, I do want to show you how you can fix if you made a mistake like I did. So I forgot one time, you can see my pleats, pleating threads are going through this seam allowance. Now, if you do this multiple times as you're pleating it, you have to just take it all out and start over. There isn't a way to correct it. But I've only done it once, so because I have my extra thread, and it is only one time, I can fix it. And the way I'm going to fix it is I'm just going to take separate that. I'm going to cut my pleating threads. And I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the seam allowance. And then I'm going to knot them back together. And I'm going to knot one to one, two to two, all the way on down. So we're going to take it out on the front, knot one to one, two to two, etc. And then I'm going to sew this seam allowance and I will show you how I handle it when I come back to block. Now the one other thing for you to know um, is when you sew the seams, you don't need to worry about getting right up next to the smocking. Just go ahead and sew your regular um, seam allowance. So here are my um, stitched seams. I did them on the machine first and then I searched the edges together. And here is my blocked bishop. So I hope you can see, well, I hope you can't see, I should say, the seams have disappeared. My messy threads here, this is that seam where I tied the threads on the right hand side. The only negative about that when I go to block is I had to pull the individual threads from this side and from this side and then spread it out. I couldn't just pull from both ends um, because they were knotted here. Now, when you go to smock this, if any seams seem a little bit visible after the blocking stage, there's no problem. When you smock it, you'll make the seams disappear because none of those seams are caught in the pleating thread. So when you smock over that seam, the smocking stitches again will hide it and just make the seam push the seam further to the back because it's not caught in a pleating thread, you won't have that lump or bump. If you are looking for um, how to block a bishop, I have a video for that. Please go check that out. I will link it here at the end. I hope you give this method a try. Let me know in the comments if you do and if it works out for you. And please remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Happy smocking!